I don't understand how my soul condition can have a different will from a desire. Mm -hmm. And I don't understand how my how my will can be different from desire from a desire altogether. I don't understand. Yeah, so so I feel this is still a bit of a problem. The reason why I've asked Lena's question last is I do see, feel this is a bit of a problem still for many of you to understand the the differences between the will and and the desire, right? So if we go back to our definition, will is the current soul-based emotional condition. So this is very important to get that will is what I am right now, warts and all. That's my will, right? It has a certain set of beliefs that I have right now. It has a certain set of emotions that I have right now. You could also say it has attitudes that, if you like. It has a certain, um, not character in the form of nature, but it has a certain character in the form of whether it's moral or not moral. So you could have, say it has a certain set of ethics and it has a certain morality right now. Right? These are things that are my will right now. And you can see that there are many thousands of things that that may entail, right? Just thousands and thousands of different ideas, concepts, beliefs. It also is based upon my memories, as we said in a previous discussion. So even based on what you remember. Now, memories form two, uh, there are two types of memories. Some are thoughts and some are feelings. So some of the memories you have are feeling-based memories, but no thought with them. And some of the memories you have are thoughts, but you, have different, you, you hardly have any feelings associated with them. So they, of course, still determine what you're going to do right now. That make sense? Right. So that's my condition right now. That, so you could call that, that's the sum total of what's called, what we've been calling, that you've heard in the past, my soul condition, right? So there's my soul condition. My soul condition is my will. It determines what I'm going to do right now automatically, right? But it doesn't determine my future. That's the beauty. It doesn't determine my future. So this is my state now... And this is what I have faith in with regard to my future. Does that make sense? Now, my desires can also be the sum total of all these things. I could desire to have a different belief system. I could desire to have some different emotions. I can desire to have some different attitudes. I can desire a different morality. I can desire to engage more ethically. I can desire to remember things or not remember things. My desire, can you see, is something that I will finish up doing in the future. Now, the only difference is I have to have faith in that future in order for my desire to be activated. And that's why we've called the desire principles, have I got them here? Uh, da, 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 there, the desire principles is a genuine expression of current soul-based faith. So my desire is what I currently have faith in, which is different to what you currently are. Does that make sense? So one's what you currently have faith in for your future, and it has to be, remember, it still has to be a feeling-based faith. It can't be just a concept or a head-based idea or something. It has to be something that you really believe and, and what's of what's going to happen in the future. Now, what I'm saying is that if the will and desire are in harmony, what that means is that I currently have this set of beliefs, emotions, attitudes, ethics and morality, and I have no faith that any of those should change or can change or will change. That's how we don't change. Does that make sense? Yep. Thanks. All right. Has to. 
So, so it can move you in a negative as well as a positive direction. Don't think it's all desire is going to take me in a positive direction. No, if you, if you desire to murder someone, eventually you may be given to the, do it at some point, right? Yeah. And even this, the desire is going to be leading you down to certain feelings and certain emotions and certain belief systems, is it not? So, Lena, does that... You haven't got the mic anymore with you. That's, that sort of helps with... You can see one is the faith, the real faith that we have in a future state. And the other is what we have right now. And that's the secret to understanding the difference between will and desire. To understand that we can change this without yet even changing this. In fact, this will not change unless we change this. Now, God's laws, God's principles, the will and desire principles, remember, interact with all the laws we've talked about thus far. So they interact and cause us to go, oh, maybe there's something wrong with my will. And once we know there's something wrong with my will, I can go, do I want to change that or not? There's desire. So me just asking the question, do I want to change it, is a shift in my desire. Uh, of course, you would need more than that to actually change, won't you? You need, you need to take that through experimentation and so forth to change. So hopefully uh, we're five minutes over, guys, so I have to stop it there, unfortunately. But isn't it a fascinating discussion? Yeah. You find that fascinating? How will and desire work in harmony with each other and how God's put these, the measurement of your will and the measurement of your desire inside of every law, mathematical, scientific certainty from God's perspective. He measures every single desire. And, if, and it's very hard, in fact, for two people to have identical desires on identical things with the identical measurement. Because it's like any measurement system, there's always little variable factors, right? So, so even your personality can be a variable factor in the way in which you express desire. So, so you know, God's measuring each little tiny thing, exact down to the exact feeling and and then the law responds and isn't it wonderful the law responds imagine a, a universe where you had a positive desire and the Lord just goes <laughs> and you have a negative desire and the Lord just goes <laughs> in other words the Lord just goes nothing no, you know whatever you do doesn't matter you know what you'd finish up believing nothing matters and isn't that what many of you, unfortunately, <laughs> have believed in the past, that nothing matters? Nothing matters. But, and, and many people on the planet, unfortunately, believe that. But that's because we've lived in this human environment, not seeing that everything matters. Everything matters. And, and God desired to create a universe where, he, where you came to the conclusion that everything matters. This is a wonderful creation, actually. He's informing us that what you do, what you say, even what you think and feel matters to the universe around you. Isn't that fantastic? It all matters. And every feeling you have matters. Every thought you have matters. And you'll find in your transformation side of things, man, that, that is a very powerful thing to engage if you know that everything matters, then you can start determining what's going to matter to you. Yeah. What's going to be important to you.